Hello and welcome everybody to the Pick 6 Podcast. Tom Chattel, Evan Bland, I'm Sam McEwen. It's November 1st on a Wednesday after, did you guys know it was a perfect October for Nebraska Athletics? No losses in football, no losses in volleyball, no losses in soccer. Perfect. And so now they go into November. Um, proving ground time. For the first time in a long time, we get to talk about a football program that's battling for a bowl bid. And, and outside of that weird 2020 thing where they could have accepted a bowl bid with, like, no wins. Um, this is going to be fun. How are you guys doing uh, the day after Halloween? Good. I, yeah. Doing fine. Doing fine. I thought it would be fun. I want to ask Tom's reaction. We were just talking trick-or-treating, much to Tom's chagrin, before we start the pod. This is what Thomas Fedoni wrote, tight end for Nebraska. Absolutely no one is out trick-or-treating right now, and it's sad. I swear, when it was 9.30 on Halloween night when we were kids, I was absolutely dominating the streets. Rain, sleet, wind, snow, it didn't matter. I was out there for hours putting in work. Do you relate to that? Is that... Yeah, I, I love Halloween. We, we do we do it up big. I just don't think you should ask athletes what their favorite candy is. Or no, that's cool. Nobody cares. <laughs> I have a three word answer for you, and I think it actually <laughs> explains a lot of this. And I don't know how common this was even ten years ago. Trunk or treat. Mm. This is what kids are doing now. My kid went to like three of them, and he went out last night uh, and hit the streets. But he was home from the streets by eight o'clock, and he's ten. It's because everybody's going to the trunk or treat, and at this moment in our household, we have five full bags of candy, and I mean, we're not going to eat them all. Some of it we're going to have to like bring to work or even throw away, <laughs> but you go to these trunk or treats at a high school or at a church or whatever, and there's 50 cars lined up. There's your houses, and they, so my son wore his, outfit, wore his costume like four times. And you're, gonna, you're seeing the Halloween thing has now, is no longer a night. It's, it's like a three-week event mm. where there's event after event after event. You see people wearing their, their, uh, their costumes all the time. One of the most inventive costumes that I saw yesterday, and I saw it on UNL's campus, it was clever, it was more clever than it appeared, is it was a kid, it was a girl, and she was wearing her letter jacket from high school. And, she, um, and it was like baseball, and, or not baseball, softball and some other sport. It was a letter jacket from high school, and she was dressed like a zombie. Okay. It was clever on two levels because she was. It was like she was the undead from high school. It was clever. Mm-hmm. I liked it. That's good. It was good. It was good. Yeah. Like Halloween's becoming like a two or three week thing. Um, you're annoyed by you're annoyed by people asking kids for their favorite Halloween candy. I'm gonna be. I'm. I'm, I'm not. I'm not annoyed by kids. You, 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 you don't mean listen. asking them? Asking them? Right. Athletes. Right. A- and coaches. <laughs> What's like, your favorite? Shut up. <laughs> What's your favorite candy? <laughs> Now, I'm going to be the party pooper with the stick in the mud here, and I get it. I, I, did, I was with John Cook. I did not find the video where Little Red was scaring all the volleyball players like that funny, especially when one of the players fell down right, right in front of the superstar on crutches. I was like, what? <laughs> I don't like scares like that. Like, you expect it when you go to a haunted house. When you're going into a facility you've entered a thousand times, you don't expect a, a nine-foot inflatable balloon to jump out at you. That's why you do it, though. Well, it is why you do it. I don't expect it. I just don't That's think it's. Do it. I just don't think it's not like. Well, he didn't think it's funny because he might lose somebody to player, but right? <laughs> well, a lot of people enjoyed it. That's what I was thinking. Like I was like, yeah, yeah you don't, you don't want to like you know scare the kid on crutches. Yeah, I was, I was with him with that. Like I, I thought it was fine up until the very end, and I'm like, oh, whew. <laughs> you knew they were saving the big one for the end too. That's how those videos always go. Some of the reactions were pretty benign. And then you had the, the falling down and, and yeah, Lindsey Krause standing there at the end. For sure. Well, we're, we're, we, we're adults, so we're moving on from Halloween right now. And we're getting into November. And, and November is not like – there's a couple of crossover seasons in high school. And the crossover season in high school actually is in December because that's kind of when basketball starts. But we're in crossover season now. There's football. Obviously, they're going to play in East Lansing. Tom, I know you're going to really miss not going to East Lansing. Uh, and then the basketball season starts right on Monday. Boom. And we're getting going with that. Wrestling starts this weekend. Um, swimming has already started. Track and field is in the winter. That's in December. So we're in crossover season. So some of what we're going to do today is talk just a little bit of like crossover topics with basketball and a, a few other things. We're going to have a half-court press podcast, but I'd love your guys' opinions too on where Nebraska basketball uh, might be. 
Um, I want to start with football, of course. We'll start there, and then we'll ask some of our rapid-fire questions about a bunch of different things. But starting with football, um, Nebraska's 5-3, and three, and they have a chance to qualify for a bowl. And they're turning the ball over a lot, but they're playing about as good a defense as we've seen since when? When's, when's the last time we saw a team play this defense at Nebraska? Well, it's not quite to the 2009 level, but that's the one that comes to mind for me. Where the offense was, was not good, the, the defense was legendary. This isn't that group, but like it's, it inspires, I think, this, a similar level of confidence where you can, you can put them at the one and they're probably going to find a way to stop. You can, you can fumble it and, and set them up in the opponent's red zone. And they're going to find a way. Like they're going to, if they give up a big play, they're going to tackle the guy and hold him to a field goal. Like, I think from a confidence perspective, that's that's where this team is. Um, again, not from a future NFL player standpoint, sure. maybe not statistically, but it do, it just feels like they're like, yeah, we got this. And and if they're kind of put in a in a quick change situation, they don't care. I'm going 09. Well, yeah, but they weren't even close to that because. Uh, that defense actually played offenses. There's no offenses in this league, uh, which is fine. You, all these wins still count, and, and actually, Nebraska's got the the perfect team for the for this conference. <laughs> you, perfect. You don't see any great offenses. You don't. There's no skill. There's no speed. Uh, very rarely. I mean, even the top like Michigan doesn't have great speed on offense. They, they just wind up and bowl over you. Play after play after play. Right. And they keep coming and they keep coming and they have a smart quarterback. That, I, that's how you win in the Big Ten. Ohio State has Marvin Harrison Jr. and a couple other guys, but I mean, we're not playing them, obviously. But obviously, the Big Ten West doesn't – there's no offense that scares anybody. Right. Even even Wisconsin is, is, is changing. So, all that aside, it's, it's a great defense to have this year. It, it's the kind of – Defense that, 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 that could get you to the Big Ten West title if you don't turn it over and you, you know, you, you make some plays on offense. Um, so that yeah, I, I don't. If I compare it to the, I, mean, I thought the 2010 defense was, was pretty good too. Darn um, it! Mm. Uh, Against know, better offense, Jared too. Crick and, and yeah. that bunch. Um, yeah, didn't have Sue, but they had a bunch of other guys. Um, you know. Yeah, it's uh, probably the best, I think, since 09 and 10. But they weren't as good as those. I wouldn't compare right. them to that. I'd just say that it's the last time Nebraska's defense has kind of carried the season. Right. You know, so, yeah. It's been fun to watch. Um, one thing I will say is that, and what was true of those 09 and 10 defenses, is Bo, Bo Pelini had kind of figured out how to defend those offenses. And he didn't quite figure out how to f- defend the Big Ten, but Tony White has. In short order, I think he's figured out maybe some things that you can do to slow down the run game because some of the teams in the Big Ten West can run the ball, but they haven't been able to run it on Nebraska. Yeah. And so I think Tony White's come in, and he's kind of figured out maybe a couple of different things that take away some of the runs that those teams would like to make. And this is, the you know, this is the worst collection of Big Ten West quarterbacks that I think I've ever seen. And we're only going to get nine years of it or ten years of it. But this is the worst, right? Like, this is the, the, sure. the worst seven, collection of seven. They seem to, to really fill gaps around, around um, the polar bear and Ty Robinson who yeah. push forward. And then these guys come in from outside, inside lanes, um, and they, they tackle so well. It I mean, works. They, they watch a – Highlight on a Big Ten Network last night when they were talking about Nebraska, and it showed Purdue with a pitch out or going wide or something, and uh, one of the Nebraska linebackers went boop right through and just knocked the guy on the ground. Yeah. That's what they're doing, and uh, they're 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 getting the uh, penetration and they're making the play, and um, and secondary as well. Um, I, th- I think they're they're doing well. Um, it's it's fun to watch because they have all this energy and it just kind of rubs off on everybody. And they're when they make plays, you know, it's, it, it gets contagious. Yeah, I think it's yeah. always an interesting thought exercise too to to see like how is it different from what we what we thought it would be coming in and why. So like 
I know that we on this pod have talked about the idea that it would take a year for the defense to take hold. We talked right. about how there wasn't a lot of proven depth on the defensive line. And so they're doing what they're doing. I think it's hard to sort of parse through how much of that is what Tony White and Nebraska's development has done and how much of that is, to your point, how bad the Big Ten West teams have been because that's when they've made a lot of their hay has been against those teams and against uh, you know group of five type of teams. So like, do you feel like this is something – that's more Nebraska or more a reflection of who they've played? I think it's a little bit of both. Oh, no. I know I went (laughs) 50-50. What I'll say is that, yeah, I don't know if uh, Oregon and Washington were on the schedule that Nebraska's statistics would be what they are. In fact, I'm confident they wouldn't be uh, because those are two really good teams, and they'll be in in the Big Ten next year, and people can learn. Which one does Nebraska play next year? I feel like they play one of those two next year. Oregon or Washington. I can't remember which one. I, I think it's – I haven't looked at it. They play Oregon. USC. Yeah. And, you know. They play UCLA. And UCLA. And, and so they'll get challenged. They'll get challenged. I, I feel like they, they, they've taken they, – the defensive line is what – I had no idea they were ever going to play like that. I think that that's coaching. But give the players credit as well. Um, that They've developed in a hurry. And uh, – I mean, they've just become different players. I mean, Ty Robinson was not doing this. You I know. agree. Um, but UCLA and USC next year. Okay. okay. But I, uh, you know, when they played Michigan, Michigan kind of had their way. So it's a little bit of schedule, sure. But I don't know that they're that much different than any any given year. I mean, you know, Minnesota. Kind of looks like that every year. They they they, they had they had at a quarterback the last few years and made plays, but um, you know everybody's kind of this. These other teams kind of do the same thing every year, pretty much. They they kind of look the same. So uh, Nebraska's defense has, has definitely caught up. They have found something, and um, they just got, they got to keep going. I mean, I you know Michigan State. What are we going to get this week? Uh, have they quit? I don't believe that. They're going to walk out in that field. It's going to be freezing about 9.30 or 10 a.m. to warm up, and it's going to be empty, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, their students don't show up when when it's a big game. Right. So what are they going to do when it's 11 a.m. and it's Nebraska and Michigan State's 2 and 5? Right. Um, I think the atmosphere will help Nebraska. Um, but, you know, we'll see. Hmm. Isn't it weird to – for Nebraska to be on the other end of the the whole like lame duck coaching staff situation, like yeah. I was watching some of Michigan State's player interviews this week, and man, it reminded me of the end of 2022 when yeah. they were playing out the string, and like they didn't have any answers, they didn't know what was next, they didn't know which coaches were going to be back, they didn't know if they'd go in the portal, uh, they just knew they had a game, and like that was sort of yeah. the the sanctuary away from the unknown, and like that's where. These guys are, and I think that's what makes the game interesting is not anything about Michigan State being a great team, but, like, it is senior day for these guys. Do they have one last little uprising in them, Uh, one last hurrah with the group as it is? Is this a team that's going to mail it in? They've lost six straight. Uh, It's just it's it's fascinating because we've seen Nebraska teams over the years in those situations, and that's where they are. Um, and, and now Nebraska's the one on the rise trying to get that ball. Well, they're, the, they're not going to lay down, they're, they're, and there's too much pride on the, the, the staff for that to happen. Um, so I think they'll make one last uh, go of it. Um, of course, they have more games left, but the home far is the home. But again, the, Nebraska needs to come out and play well early and jump on them if they can. And, and then all of a sudden, reality might kick in. That okay, we're not good. We don't. Our our crowd's not here, and uh, we don't necessarily want to be here. We don't. You know, beating Nebraska is not that big a deal. Um, I'm making all this up. That's not maybe how they how they're thinking, but I'm thinking that if Nebraska jumps on these guys early, uh, if they if they if they make mistakes early and and drop it on the ground and keep Michigan State in the game, or they, they you know they fall behind. Eh, it may not be a long day, but um, I, if that defense can come out and get a turnover or just jump on them early, it, 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 might, it might really help. Agreed. Same situation. What's interesting, Michigan State last week goes to Minnesota. 
Same as Northwestern and Purdue against Nebraska. Minnesota turns the ball over twice inside their own territory to start the game. Michigan State got two field goals. You know, again, if that goes two touchdowns, it's a different game. But they only get two field goals and they lose 27 to 12. Um, the score is a little misleading. Michigan State gets down inside the 10 late in the game. They had a chance to cut it to seven, but um, weren't able to do it. Michigan State's playing two backup quarterbacks, both of whom are more runners than throwers. They do have a really good running back, Nathan Carter. Good player. Uh, played for E.J. Barthel last year at Connecticut. Probably has a chance to be the all, uh, an all-Big Ten running back, mm-hmm. uh, which is interesting. Defensively, they're actually pretty bad against the pass. And so I do think this is a game where Nebraska, if they can hit that option pass two or three times, they might be able to hit it for big yards. And what I will say is that I think they have an opportunity. This sounds bizarre. I know it sounds strange saying it. This is a game where I think they could throw for 200 yards because I think Michigan State's not going to worry about it. They're going to try to stop the run, and Heinrich Harburg's going to have an opportunity. And I don't know if you guys were listening to Marcus Satterfield last night, but apparently his lip was so busted up that he was – maybe he was joking. I don't know, that he had to, he had to eat through a straw. I think he was. Yeah. I took that to be a joke. but I kind of, Maybe he was joking. But we didn't talk to Harburg on Tuesday at the no, same time. That's right. So he took a shot. Um, that's one of the most violent hits that I've ever seen a quarterback take that didn't result in a concussion. And that was that was a remarkable hit, and it wasn't targeting. It wasn't like he didn't he put his head to the side and the whole thing. But right. I was like, that's an unbelievably big hit that he took there. He's got he's got to get he's got to protect himself. Football's a violent sport, man. And man, he has he has bore more violence than any quarterback I can remember since Jamal Lord. Well, he's like caught in between too, right? And I thought. You know, Matt Rule did a good job laying it out. Like, you think about Heinrich Harburg against Colorado, Northern Illinois. Like, he was just kind of going. And, and he was the guy that people in the spring talked about being an H-back, potentially, or, or, or something like that. Um, so he's, like, caught in between what he was then and being the guy who they maybe want him to be eventually as sure. a guy who slides and protects himself. And so instead he's kind of, like, you know, uh, shutter stepping and slowing down and just taking these big hits yeah. and overthinking it. I think yeah. that's where he is. Yeah, I, I I really love the guy. I think he's fun to watch. Um, but if if he doesn't take care of the turnovers, uh, I don't think he'll be the guy next year. I, I think they'll, they'll they'll go find somebody else. Um, you can't have a quarterback who turns the ball over. You just can't. Um, but forget next year. I love the fact that this kid from Kearney is the quarterback of of this. They're not there yet, but you go to a bowl game, you, you potentially have a seven-win season or whatever. I mean, you know, you, you help bring Nebraska back in a big way. What a great thing for a guy like him to have yep. the rest of his life. Exactly. And and um, he's a guy who's going to be on the field. He does make plays. He's got that it factor. I just don't know if he'll be the quarterback because you can't turn the ball over at quarterback. It just it's not going to work, and, and, and Matt Rule's not going to make. He's not going to let it work. So he's got to clean that up the rest of the season. Um, I think to get himself in the uh, the Derby next year. But uh, forget again, forget next year. He's he's got it all in front of him. He's in charge, and um, I, I, yeah, he's turning the ball over. But I I feel I, I if I were a Nebraska fan, I, I I feel pretty good about it. He takes a shot and he comes back. He's very tough. <clears throat> So one of Nebraska's quarterbacks next year is playing against Westside on Friday, Danny Kalen. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we'll see how that goes for him. He's going to have all his receivers. Uh, that'll be a fun matchup. Well, that One of the rapid-fire questions I'm about to ask here in a minute is uh, is which quarterback on Nebraska's roster won't be there in 2024, but I think we would agree that Heinrich Harburg will be for sure. Any other thoughts yes. here on Nebraska football before we get to the questions? I, you know, one thing I was thinking about, and this is, I guess, a little bit more related to Michigan State, but what a fall for that program. I mean, they were a, a college football playoff team, you know, n- not all that long ago. They, they were ranked. Um, you know, they, they had Mel Tucker, and, and they signed him to a big contract. It looked like they were going to break out, and then now this is where they are. Yeah. Like, I just thought it was, a, it was an interesting tale of or anecdote of what college football has become i mean how quickly you can rise how quickly you can fall and now nebraska is the team that's rising and michigan state's going to be reset and i just thought that was interesting in this moment to kind of reflect on how how quickly fortunes can change in a program 11 and 2 two years ago 
and yeah. you know may go two and ten this year. Yeah, I, happens fast. Nebraska's defense played great in that game uh, two years ago. That might have been Eric Chenander's finest moment. Yeah. Um, didn't they shut them out in the second half for no first downs? Um, yep. And uh, you know you you lose on a special teams blunder. I know. Um, but an all timer. That could have been. Uh, you know, I remember just watching that game. JoJo had a great game. Linebacker hitting everybody. Um, they, they, you know, so it's it, it's been a weird series in some ways. Just a, a lot of not great games, but I, I can think of moments like each each time they played that. Oh wow! That, 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 just weird moments. So, um, what's the weird moment going to be this year? <laughs> going to be one. Hopefully, yeah. not punting. To the, anyway, that was unbelievable. Well, that what one last time and uh, Brandon Rice catch. Yep. Uh, Jake Cotton, sorry, Jake uh, Timber fell falling over. <laughs> um, Invisible um, chair, according to Colin Cowherd, and the. Um, but, you know, going back to the 90s, you know. Yeah. Tom Osborne, I told Nick Saban, you're not that bad. Or you're not as bad as you think. Mm-hmm. And um, <laughs> I think we could argue that that was the night that Tom Osborne's trajectory as Nebraska's head coach changed. I mean, I don't – was he going to leave in 97? I don't know. But I think after that 95 season, what happened that night with Lawrence Phillips probably, you know, convinced him yeah i'm not doing this for 10 more years yeah that, that five months was pretty rough as he great did. of a team as they were yeah he might have said that but the year after he was quit he wanted to come back he he, he missed it yeah and he i think he i mean of all schools michigan state made a run at him i know yeah and probably I, a good idea he might he have been consider, pretty good there. he might have considered it but he didn't you know he wasn't he promised Nancy, you know, but um, <laughs> right. we're way off topic here. But anyway, yeah, I um, he retired when he was sixty years old. That was um, well, yeah, he would have um, he would have had to adjust to some things, but he would have still had to had not been on top of his game. He would have had to change uh, staff a little bit. Those guys were because Saban was down. seventy. He's seventy two, right? Who Saban? He's like seventy two. He, he just had his birthday this week. I think he's seventy two, right? Seventy two. Um, but imagine Nick Saban retiring in 2011. Ooh. I mean, that's amazing that Osborne did that. Yeah, he could, have, he could have done it for you know, 15 more years. Okay, we're on now. We're on to the question. Speaking of coaches who are older, our first rapid fire question will be this: Is Kirk Ferentz Iowa's coach in 2024? No, I don't think he is. No, I don't think so. After yesterday, I agree. I don't know what that – I don't – those were – you know, he was asked point blank, are you going to be the coach? It was a good question. Are you going to be the coach? And he did not answer that question. Now, was that a question he would normally answer? And then they always kind of, well, kinda. we're focused on yeah. Northwestern. Right. But um, very timely question, very – because he's somebody – he found out the other day that he's got a boss. And you could argue the last several years he hasn't had a boss. Mm-hmm. He's the boss. Now he's not the boss. All of a sudden, and uh, you know, old cowboy like that doesn't take that very lightly. That's right. So, um, yeah, he's um, these things. They don't. There's no hap- very few happy endings for coaches. Very, very few fairy tale endings. Right. Um, and. Um, for guys who stay too long. And, um, you know, again, I, I put it on his kid. He should have he should have resigned as offensive coordinator after last season mm-hmm. and just coached the offensive line. Everybody would have been happy. No, they, they might have just got another coordinator who was going to do the same thing because the, the, the head guy is the head guy. He's the guy in charge of the offense, not not Brian. But um, don't. Don't drag your dad into the you know mud as he's as he's going into the you know the final stages of a great career. Don't don't make it ugly. And I think it's um, yeah, I agree that, uh, that they may win the West. The Nebraska game won't be the last game. He may go to the Indy. Oh, 
I don't want to see that game. Um, but then, then they'll go to a bowl, and then that, that'll be it. But the um, question is, when would he announce? And is he going to make it hard on the AD to go hire somebody? Is he going to drag it, drag it out? Oh, in January? Oh, yeah, by the way, I think I'm going to do this, um, which makes it harder to hire somebody. I don't think he. I, I think he has too much pride in his program, but some of these coaches, they they get, they can get vindictive. I mean, it, 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 that'll be a sort of interesting thing if if that's how all this plays out. I think that's a, that's a good one. Second question is this: If he's not the coach, is it an in-house or an out-of-house hire? Oh, out of house. I think out of house. Out of house. Yeah. Not Phil Parker. He won't get a chance. I think it'll be or or the special teams coordinator. I don't think so. Okay. I, well, I, the AD is not an Iowa Hawkeye. Right. I mean, she's she, she she's from Umsel, Missouri St. Louis. She's a whatever whatever the Umsel uh, the Umsel mascot is. She's been to, I think Minnesota, uh, Wisconsin has. maybe. Yep. Butler, uh, but yeah. So, oh, she'll want to put her own stamp on it and, and hire her, her her person, and that's fine. Um, but you don't know what you're going to get, do you? When you mentioned the thing about making an off-schedule decision, the only way that Kirk Ferentz could, could pull that string is to do what Bob Stoops did and walk away in the summer and then say, I'm handing it to this person. Absolutely. He could do that. Who would he have hired? It? Who, who would he have handed it to, though? One of his two coordinators. Yeah. Lamar Woods? Yeah. Uh. Woods or, you know, Woods or uh, Parker, I don't know. I, I Maybe maybe she'll, but um, if there's a thing right now between – AD and head coach clashing, mm-hmm. if there is, the, the, the staff will be loyal to the head coach. Staff will, will, won't want to work for her. I can promise you that. That's a good point. They, they won't do it. So we'll see. But, I, again, I'm talking out of thin air here. I don't know any of that stuff. Oh, I thought that answer yesterday was pretty telling. <laughs> so, right. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I, I think so. I mean, I think, but I just think the assistants – he could have said, I have no plans of leaving, and if, that would have been a... If he's mad at her, they're mad at her. Right. And the program just, it needs, I think it needs a reset, because it, this isn't the only thing. I mean, he, listen to Kirk Ferentz talk about NIL, or the transfer portal, well, and right. you'll know that he was already kind of getting fed up with the way yeah. things were going. It's, it's a good time to come into the new century of, of college football. You're right. You're going, it, well, here come here come the... The West Coasters and they're going to have NIL out, out at the the, uh, the door, and they're they're going to have all this stuff. And yeah, it's it's going to be a, a different world. You're going to have to market your program as okay. We, we we may have just finished seventh or eighth, but we know what we're doing. <laughs> That's you're really going to have to convince your fans that you're on top of the on top of things because. Um, it's going to be tough to finish in the upper half of the league. It's just going to be tough. Really tough, for sure. For sure, for sure. Third question. The four teams that are currently ranked in the top four, I'm not saying this will be the order, but the four teams are Ohio State, Georgia, Florida State, and Michigan. Are those going to be the four teams in the playoff? And if not, which ones won't be in there? I'll go first. I think that's the four. There, I said it. I think I think Michigan's going to take out Ohio State at the end of the year, and Ohio State is not going to drop far enough, and all that has to happen is Washington loses a game, and I think they will. I think it's going to be the four that we have right now with Michigan one, Georgia two, Florida State three, Ohio State four. And they will, they will do the rematch. They'll do it. And can anybody beat Florida State is my question. I don't know That's that what I was just can. looking at their schedule. I I think you're probably right. Um, Pitt, Miami, North Alabama, and Florida. No, left for Florida State. I mean, Florida can beat them. They have the talent. I don't think they will. But I think Florida beat them last year. Who's going to Who's going to be Washington? Well, they have a, they they're have not, a rough road. They're left. not going to rematch Oregon because they're, they're in the North. They could do it in the uh, They could do it in the Pac-12 title game. They don't do divisions anymore. Oh, well, they don't. You okay, know. my. So bad. Oregon can play. No, it's okay. Oregon can play them again, and well. the question becomes, and so this would be the question, is, okay, if Washington loses and then they beat Oregon again, is that enough to overtake Ohio State? If Washington loses and Oregon doesn't and wins out, then I'd say Oregon is in the top four. 
Washington has USC, Utah, Oregon State, Washington State. Brutal. Yeah. Brutal. Texas won't have a Big 12 title. If they're in the title game, their opponent won't be good enough to, to get them in the top four. In other words, if they beat Oklahoma again, Oklahoma's kind of damaged right They're ranked ninth. They won't help them get right. in the top four. So I agree with that. I don't think uh, – because I because Texas has the, the best win of anybody in the country. Um, the Alabama. Agreed. But they're fifth. Oh, or, or Texas sixth. is seventh. Yeah, dropped a bit. Well, Texas is seventh in the CFP. And they can move up. Yeah. But they're not. But they can't get in the top four because of that. They're not their opponent. You need an off schedule loss by Florida State, or an off schedule loss by Georgia. Which okay, now if Georgia has a bad day against LSU or Alabama, that can happen. But would Alabama then jump Texas? Probably not. No. Anyway, so I think I think you're right, and um, those were, I think that's going to be the four. But if there, if, but if one was out, if Michigan beats. If everybody wins out, but Michigan beats Ohio State, what's the order? I think I think it would be hard to keep Michigan out of the first spot, and then it would either be Georgia or Michigan, and then it would be uh, Florida State and Ohio State. Right. So or you, <clears throat> Oregon. Yeah, I was going to say, I think Oregon still has a shot, too. Their, their schedule, California, USC, Arizona State, Oregon State. Right, but it's much ha- easier. Oh, but, yeah. but how are they going to jump into the top four? By winning, if everybody by wins out, but if everybody else wins out except Ohio State, yep, they they would they would win out, which includes beating Washington and in the in the Pac-12. Ohio, title State's game, yeah. Ohio State's only loss would be to Michigan yeah. at Michigan. They don't play in the Big Ten title games, and they can't lose there. Right. See, next year you could, yep. you could have another loss, um, knock mm-hmm. you out. Okay. But see, I'm, what I'm working on here, I want Michigan to be number one. I want Ohio State, Ohio State to be number four. Me too. That's what I want. Well, that'll be the debate then: is Ohio State versus Oregon for that for that last spot. I think it'll be, be Ohio that. State. It'll be really interesting. I, I think it'll be if Washington State. wins out; they're going to be in there. Yes, the end. So if they if they go if they run the that's, table, that's well, tough. Then, then, then that schedule gonna be, is brutal. Okay, Oregon's loss versus Ohio State's loss. Right? Yes, Oregon's loss for at Washington, Ohio State at Michigan, uh, advantage Ohio State. Yeah, I get. But do you put two teams from the same conference in there? Sure. You have the recency Hap- bias of having Ohio time. State just yeah. lost. The SEC yeah. happens all the time. I think you do it, but I, you know we'll see. Well, That's, they did it last year. I, I, yes, they did. And That's true. It, it'll be interesting to watch. And we almost had Ohio State, Michigan. We did. We did. I mean, it's best this best football game Ohio State's played since they beat out they since they beat Oregon for the national title. Anyway, they I, played an incredible game against Georgia, and they fell short because a guy got hurt. And that's too bad. Um, but that was, I mean, yeah. that was the best football game Ohio State's played in a long time. And they played great on defense, too, even though they gave up whatever they gave up. Okay, next question. Is Jim Harbaugh the coach at Michigan next year? No. How can he be? Yeah, I don't think so. I, but, but who's going to, but what NFL team, I'm telling you, um, NFL, are these, who's going to hire him? Is it Raiders? The Raiders? Las Vegas the Raiders has an opening. Hire him, yeah. Raiders. Yeah, that, they, they're, 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 oh. they'd be, because a lot of these, Teams now want to hire the next great analytical kid, punk, mind. I mean, I w- who wouldn't want to see the Raiders hire him and go against Kansas City twice a year? Oh, boy. That'd be – I think compelling. I think Chicago Bears going to have an opening? Yeah, and I would love it. But I don't see, know that it's going to happen. I don't even know how I would feel if the Bears hired him and then he was the head coach. I think I would have very conflicted but strong emotions. I, I think he's a guy who fits only a couple franchises. Yep. The I mean, Bears those, would be one of them. Those might be the Raiders, might be the other. So, yeah. Could if he work he, for Kevin Warren? Well, I, I, he probably could, I guess. I mean. Because he'd be working with him. You know, it, it's, it's, not, it's not Bill Moose or Scott Frost, is it? No. It's, it's Harbaugh. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it'll I don't be, think I he'll think be there. Neither do I, and I think he's – the reason I asked it is I saw the Raiders fire their coach at midnight, and I was like, Jim Harbaugh is going to be there, and they're going to go toe-to-toe with Kansas City for however many years. The, he's a perfect fit for that, for the Raiders and for Vegas. If and he has a quarterback, thing. he's got to get a quarterback. He does. Wherever he's gone, this is what genius top, genius take here, everybody needs a quarterback. But everywhere he's won, he's had a 
great quarterback. He has. The Niners, he had um, – Alex Smith and Kaepernick. Kaepernick, mm-hmm. and uh, who was at the time very, very, he very was great. good. Um, uh, um, Stanford. Um, Luck. Andrew, Andrew Luck. Luck. Yeah, he's um, special. Yeah. So anyway, uh, now he's got a guy in Michigan. He, he wasn't winning early in Michigan. He didn't have a quarterback. Yeah, this guy's good. So, well, uh, Jimmy G's gone. They're going to give They're going to give Aiden, Aiden Hutchinson a uh, – he's, he, he's the, the guy now. They announced that this morning. Yeah. So Jimmy G's career is over. Um, oh, he's he just retired? No, I mean he's not gonna. I mean, yeah. They're just gonna throw him away. I'm, after the season, I'm yeah. guessing he'll be he'll be done. That's too bad. And because uh, they'll, they'll have Harbaugh, and he won't want good him. guy. I mean, Jimmy Harbaugh G's a good will guy. try to get somebody. Uh, maybe he'll try to revive. Maybe he'll try to revive Kaepernick. Um, it's possible. After he, after all those years off, though, can he play? I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, they'll. Um, I think I think they'll trade. Um, I'm just drawing a big blank today. Uh, a, a, a receiver, um, Devontae Adams. Devontae Adams. God, I just watched this this morning. It was at 5 a.m. I was half asleep. Um, <laughs> I think they trade him and, 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 and try to get picks. So yeah. Wouldn't you just start over? You'd think they they waited until after the trade deadline to <laughs> to, to fire the because the trade deadline uh. would. Past, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it made no sense, but anyway, maybe that's why they fire him because they wouldn't trade Devontae. Well, Adams. He, he'll know. have to wait out the season. They but, will. Um, yeah, it was. Um, yeah, no, it's uh, Harbaugh. I don't think will be the coach at Michigan. We'll see what happens. I think the NFL is now a great landing spot for him. Next question: Nebraska men's basketball, NCAA, NIT, or nothing. Devontae Adams. What was your name again? I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, the um. NIT, and I'm, I'm, I say it because I think I like some of their pieces, some of their parts. I don't know how they're going to fit or work together. I don't like how the season's starting at all. Uh, I don't know what Juwan Gary did, but he's supposed to be a leader, and you know, he's breaking rules, team rules. Maybe it was something light and not that big a deal. But they injuries they always seem to happen. Um, I like the parts. I like. I think there's there's a lot of things there to like. Uh, I haven't seen the the big man from uh, uh, Bradley Braves play yet. Uh, you need to stay off a scooter, uh, I guess, or stay out stay off that part of town. Lincoln. I don't know what that was all about, but um, I, I think they're probably got more inside than they've had in a while mm-hmm. and that helps in the Big Ten you know they um, probably still won't be Purdue but I think the, the, the middle of the Big Ten is not great uh, they got to make shots but they, they got a shot maker and then there was, he went down the other night Tom Monaga and I'm not going well, what else can happen to these guys but he's apparently okay he's okay so NIT Fred will talk tomorrow at the at before rule at the presser. All right. Rule presser, but before that, Fred presser. Hmm. N-A- N- NCAA, NIT, or nothing? Yeah, I'll split the difference, too. Say NIT. I yeah. think the, the, the roster versatility is interesting to me. The yeah. Big Ten being, by its own standards, maybe a little bit oh, it's down. off of what it has been. Better believe it. it. Helps. Um, you know, as Tom laid out, some of the injury stuff and, and kind of the lead-up to the season isn't something that inspires a ton of confidence. But this is a team that's got to show something now. So, yeah, I think NIT. I think NIT too. I do think that they could trend more toward you know 19 wins. I just wonder if the strength of schedule is going to be there, based on what I think the Big Ten is going to be. So I, I don't know. But I like their non-conference. I know they you get to the end of the year, you're in a bubble. Well, why didn't you play better people? Because they're trying to win, <laughs> just trying to win some games and get some momentum. Uh, the, the, the Big Ten should be enough for you to get in the tournament. Um, I like the way they were playing defense after last year. I think that's a really big deal in the Big Ten. Um, Alec is an interesting guy. What's oh, he, yeah. he going to give him? I don't know. Um, but um, he's really interesting. Energy. And, um, yeah, I he'll think under, he'll he'll frustrate the opponent. I, I think there's a there, there's a lot of good pieces there. And uh, how do they fit? Mm-hmm. And um, Enough to get to the tournament. You probably have to get in the top seven. Uh, can they do that? Yeah. Uh, maybe. Maybe. We'll see. Um, 
I think to go NCA or top seven or whatever, they'd, I think Casey is going to have to be that guy. Sure. Who hits a lot of shots and carries a momentum and opens opens uh, opens up shots for other guys on the on the team too. Um, you know, I like Lawrence. You know, Demarcus Lawrence is a good guy. Yeah, he is. Um, so beating Creighton, I think, will be very important in Nebraska's NCAA tournament chances. That's yeah, the best team they're going to play in the conference by some margin. So winning that game is going to be really important. That'd be a hell of a game. I I watched Creighton practice yesterday, and I'm doing a column on uh, Ashworth, and um, <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> they look really, really good. Yeah, that's um, you know, it, they're gonna be a handful. Yeah, and that's good news. That's good. They, yeah. Everybody's looking forward to watching them this year. Um, okay, next question: Which quarterback at Nebraska currently do you not think will be there in 2024? Are we talking about three of them or, or the top no, two or the, any of them? Any of them. <sighs> Maybe you think they're all going to be there. I think I think they're all going to be there if for no other reason than if Sims or Purdy leave, they have to sit out a year as, as guys who've already transferred. That's right. So I don't know that you'd pull that trigger, especially when Matt Rule and Marcus Satterfield go out of their way every time they talk to say that they have confidence in all three of those guys. So – I, yeah, I think they're all going to be there. Um, you know, especially the way Harburg, as he finishes this season, if he leads him to a bowl, you know, just the way he's wired, I don't see him going anywhere. I think they're all going to be there. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, but I think they're going to go in the portal. I really do. I think that. I think that. Again, unless Harburg shows me something else, I mean, I think they're going to have to. Okay. Um, but, you know. Boy, wouldn't that be tough though? That, you know, the, the guy leads you to a great season or one of these seasons. People are celebrating and you love him, and you, then you go find somebody else. That'd be hard to do. But he's got to clean up the, he's got to clean up the turnovers. You can't have a quarterback that turns it over. Okay, maybe um, the guys get around, uh, guys get around him healthy and better enough to where he gets better. Um, he's got to hang on to the ball. Yeah, he got to hang on to the I ball. Agree. And um, yeah, yeah, I think I think that that's a possibility. Um, but um, I like him. I just based on what I've seen of Harburg, I like him, a, his future a lot more than Sims. And I'm not trying to be hurtful to Sims, but in the first two games, and Evan knows I talked about this. In the first two games, I talked to Evan about it. I was like, there, you can't throw the ball like that. Like, you can't throw flat balls right into people's chests. Harburg doesn't do that. He doesn't. Huh. You know, I think I just think that if Harburg had a, gr- a great offseason and a little bit more d- around him, I think there's still potential there. And you do, too. I know that. I do. And you're saying he's got to learn how to hold on to the ball, which clean I totally it up. agree. He's got he's to clean it up. I think they could go into the portal, and, in fact, I, th- I agree with you, they probably will, and I think he could win a competition against a portal quarterback. Agreed. If he grows um, in the offseason because he has some tools. Mm-hmm. And, and then the question becomes – and this is a legitimate question. If you go into the portal, how much money are you willing to pay? Because that's going to determine who you get. Well, I mean, the, the you know, Rule and Satterfield have, have been good soldiers. They, they took what was here yeah. because they brought in Sims. Um, but the, they, they generally trying to coach up everybody that's right. been here. Um so now they're going to say, okay, we did that. Now what, what's their idea for a quarterback? Right. We may find out. Um, on the other hand, um, let's see how this finishes. A lot of this has to do with how this season finishes. Are they, are they going to get that sixth win? Well, I think we all think they will. Yeah. But, you know, how many more? I mean, what, you know, um, the, the turnovers, how does it? I just think they're going to look at this season and go, if it's a deal where maybe they scratch out a seventh win, go to a bowl game, hey, maybe you win that. Uh, you look at the formula, defense, uh, quarterback that's solid, mm-hmm. uh, manager, not you know great quarterback, but he'll make a few plays, 
He he's a leader, tough guy. Maybe maybe that's a formula going forward. Maybe. But we've certainly seen that in the Big Ten. Defense, solid quarterback, running game. That that's a formula. So you don't necessarily need to go out and get some guy who throws for four hundred yards. Um Unless Satterfield wants that. <laughs> what does he want? You know well, what I mean? Just as an example, again, <sighs> there's guys. Arizona has two quarterbacks. And one of them just got hurt. The other guy came in and beat Oregon State. They're both good. And they've both been coached by a real good coach. Well, both of those guys aren't going to stay there. <laughs> so That's right. You know? How much you willing to pay for this for for the guy that just got replaced? I don't know. Like, you get, you know, that guy's pretty good. And he's been in a pro-style system. So, um, okay, last question. There's three tiers of bowls, tier one, tier two, tier three. Is Nebraska going to be in the quick lane tier? Are they going to be in the Vegas tier? Or are they going to get to eight wins and get up to the New Year's Day tier? Well, I mean, here's what I think. Uh, November 24th, Iowa, Nebraska is to see who goes to Vegas. Okay. I like that. Winner? Winner goes to Vegas. All right. I think even or if Nebraska, Nebraska, I think <laughs> even if Nebraska deserves to be in the tier three GDR. bowl, they're still going to be in the tier two tier two bowl because all those bowl officials are going to look and see this fifteen to twenty thousand Nebraska Absolutely. fans that haven't traveled since twenty sixteen in December. Like they're going to want that, so I think you're, you're going to see some reaching. Even if they are a tier three team, I think they're going to play in a tier okay. two bowl. I, absolutely, and we were playing around yesterday um, at the of all things the. The Creighton practice, we're sitting around talking about the uh, Nebraska bowl games, uh-huh. Uh-huh. and uh, somebody brought up the point. Other oh, Jay school. What about the, uh, the 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 Duke Mayo Bowl in Charlotte? Wouldn't Charlotte love to have Matt Rule for a week? Uh-huh. I'm going. <laughs> I, I'm saying that'll never happen because <laughs> bowl games are supposed to have a little bit of a good vibe. Yeah, that'd be a. I'd be a week of hell for everybody. Yeah, I don't Charlotte think people like wouldn't that. want to see Matt Rule, and he wouldn't want to see them for a week. It's too soon. Yeah, and maybe tough. four years down the road, time is you know we've come back and he's a different guy. You know, whatever. It's it's a lot more space in between. But now no, there's no way. That's one bowl I can tell you right now. Nebraska would never uh, agree to go to that bowl. Uh, but I don't think they'll be up there that high anyway. But um, I think it's, you know, but you look at Vegas. The Hawkeyes travel great. They do. And they haven't been to Vegas, I don't think. But you're, you're coming in and see the problem with Iowa might be it's, it's not a, really a feel-good story. <laughs> They've got some drama. No. And uh, the offense doesn't do much, whereas Nebraska's offense doesn't do much either. But, but you've, it's, it's, it's a real positive story. It's a celebration. Brass going to a bowl game is a, you're getting a celebration of fans. They, they're going to go nuts. Yeah. And so, well, what are you going to get with Iowa? They're going to show up, but it's not a celebration. Uh, unless it's the, the Kirk Ferentz, you know, the, uh, the well, farewell uh, game. So, we'll see. But I think that's my uh, Iowa, Nebraska-Iowa game for uh, Las Vegas. Would you rather play USC in Vegas or Iowa State in Phoenix? I mean, I would see USA all day, but you right. want that. You want that. Is there any way? Yeah. Caleb Williams against these black shirts? Is he going to play, though? I don't think. I don't no, think he, he probably won't play. play. He wouldn't play. play. No, he wouldn't play in the bowl game. Um, now, is there any chance a 6-6 six and six Colorado team goes to Vegas? Because you know they're all going to want prime. Sure. They're all going to want him. Then they would, I don't think they'd have a rematch. I don't think they do that. This isn't a Nebraska-Washington situation. Especially when they have to play well, I mean, they in play September. Again, though. I wouldn't think so. Um, the Big Ten, Big Twelve did that to screw Nebraska the last time. Yeah, I don't think they would do that. It, it, absolutely. Yeah. If Vegas insisted on Coach Prime, Nebraska might say, well, "Let's go to Phoenix and play Iowa State." Right. Nine to six. Let's hmm. get to the picks. Okay, Tom is ahead. Uh, Tom is seventy and fifty-three, or something like that. It's <laughs> it's better than that. Um, uh, Evan, you are you are behind. It's not seventy and fifty-three. What am I doing? I'm a moron. You're not seventy and fifty three, Tom. I, I I wouldn't think so. You're not. You're would, seven. You're you're seventy and uh, you are seventy and twenty. You're seventy and twenty. Evan is sixty two and twenty eight. 
and I am 59 and 31. Oh, okay. if you say so. <laughs> so you're up. Ready? K-State, right. K-State of Texas. Texas. Man. It's the kind of game they win. All right, I'm going to go K-State. K-State. Notre Dame at Clemson, the Tyler Bowl. Oh, Notre Dame. <clears throat> yep, Notre Dame. Dabo's, Dabo's team now is about ready to abandon them. And so are so is, so is radio callers. Tyler. Uh, Missouri at Georgia. 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 I know better. Ugh. Uh, Illinois at Minnesota. Oh, boy. Tight line. It's like two. That's a <laughs> brutal one. Tight line. Very At tight. Minnesota? At Minnesota. Oh, I'll go Goldie. <laughs> Illinois. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm with Minnesota on this one. Iowa Northwestern. It's a game Iowa could lose. Pitcher's duel. That's right. I'll tell you what, the Northwestern's pretty good. They, they, they play some games that are, I mean, they're, what's Iowa? What's this going to do? I don't, probably won't do anything to them. I'll probably come out and fire it up. That defense, I'll go Iowa. Well, I got to make a move, so Northwestern. Yeah, you got to go against me. Iowa. They always beat those guys. Except for the one time in Iowa City. This is a good <laughs> week of football, guys. I mean, there's so many games on here that I just love. KU at Iowa State. Ooh, mm. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's a good one. That's a tight one. Both these teams are on a win streak. I'm taking Iowa State. Kansas. I, you know. Who would you say? Kansas. Well, I'm going to be in Lawrence. I have to take Kansas. I'll just say this. If Matt Campbell brings this thing back and they go eight and four, that's a pretty good season. Yeah. Like he <laughs> you know, he had his own Tyler moment and he that would be pretty impressive. Penn State at Maryland Maryland. Penn State. Yeah, Penn State. Yeah, I'm all over that. I Maryland in November. Forget about it. UCLA at Arizona. Arizona. That was quick. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good team. Good coach. Yeah, I'll take the Zonies. I like their I like their their scheme. UCLA. UCLA. Bedlam. Oklahoma at Oklahoma. Oh State. my god. I love this game. This is the greatest thing oh, ever. The final bedlam. It's the and the, the Bosworth Gundy exchange yeah, was, was fantastic. It was. God, this um, is great. This is what time is that game? Two thirty? Okay. Yeah. I wish it were later. That's not a night game, huh? Okay. Um. Wait, ABC ESPN really has it. Is that on Fox or ABC ESPN? Uh, I don't know. All right, so ABC ESPN's had its head up its rear all get ready. year long. Get yeah. ready to take OU. Um, Oklahoma State. <laughs> I'm taking Oklahoma State too. At the last stand, they can burn it. They'll burn it all down if they don't win. Right. This is the last, Gundy's last stand. Yeah, it is. It means everything. It means more than any every other game they've ever played, ever. Yeah. And this is the most meaningful game in the, in the history of Oklahoma State. Yeah. I hope you're right. Oh, you. Yep. Uh, <laughs> he has really? To, well, he has to go against me if he's going to yeah, catch sure. up. Uh, sure. Okay. Why not? All right. Washington at USC. If Caleb Williams is going to win the second Heisman, this is the game. Well, he's not. <laughs> but um, but they're going to get somebody, aren't they? Aren't they going to get somebody? Oh, yeah. They're still USC. Mm-hmm. Uh, they don't play defense, but mm-hmm. gosh. I'm going to take USC just to get it. I'm out. going Washington. Okay. Yeah, I'll go Washington. I don't, okay. I don't still don't trust Lincoln Riley. LSU at Alabama. Oh, Bama. Yeah, muscle memory, Bama. I picked against them, and I got burned. <clears throat> I'll take Alabama. Nebraska, Michigan State, last one. 
Carrasco. I can't pick it. They're on a roll. I can't pick against them. Yep. I think it'll be similar to the last three, Nebraska. Skurs. We've got some interesting picks this week. Um, this, you know, let's see how many you and, and Tom differed on, Evan. One, two, three, four, five. He, he can, he'll be right there. there. Go. Let's do you it. Get, you got to make, you, you got to be you gotta, right there. You, if you get all five of them, then, then you, you're in it. He'll yeah. Got to hang around into bowl season like you tend to do. I'll just, I'll just see what happens. Sam I, I think Oklahoma move. State's going to. Yeah, I think the emotion's way on their side. Now, sometimes, remember Nebraska, Texas, that goes against you. Yeah, it does. Nebraska, that, that kind of choked that game. Um, but I just think this is the most important game in the history of that program. Yeah. And I wish I was going to be there. At uh, T. Boone Pickens Stadium. It's nicer than it used to be, right? When it was Lewis Field. See, I was thinking about stadiums in terms of the, the press box, and the box is okay there. It's a little better. It's it's a two one of these weird Big Ten contraption. You know, visitors are on one side of the press box, homes on the other side. You don't really see anybody, but um, um, yeah, it's. Um, Last time I, I was only, I think I was only in that press box once. They played 2002, they lost. 2006, I think they won. Lost. Then they, they lose the six, mm-hmm. but they won in 10. They won in 10. It was the week after they lost the the Texas game, and they, that was devastation. They went down there, and uh, Martinez played a great game. Yeah. That, that, that game got him into the, into the, the title game pretty much. Then they, they, they come it's the home. Best game of his career. They come home and they play Missouri. And Missouri was too up for that game because they 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 wanted to, to send Nebraska out of the Big Twelve with a loss. Yeah. Because they hated the fact that they didn't get the Big Ten invite. So they were too hyped up. And um, Roy Hill, three hundred seven yards. How many Melvin Gordon have? Does anybody remember? He's still he's still running. 408. 408. That's our pick six podcast for this week. We'll be back next week to recap Nebraska basketball, other stuff, talk about bowl games, whatever. Thanks for listening.